You know, today we're going to be starting a new series on Wednesday nights, and, and we're going to be talking about getting ready for the new year. And, and today we're going to have a special focus, and we're going to be focusing on getting our relationships ready. ready Because I think everything is about relationships. Right. It's about our relationship with God and then our relationship with each other. The Bible, you know, someone asked Jesus, what is the greatest command? And he says, love God. With, all, with everything you got. With all of and it. then he goes, love, with that same love, love your neighbors. And I think that's the biggest struggle we have nowadays. You know, we have a challenge with coronavirus, but there's something way more challenging. It's our relationships. You know, last week we did a, a time of prayer, which we'll do today too. But we had a time of prayer after the, after the service, Wednesday night service. Right. And to my surprise, really around half the requests or maybe three quarters of the requests were the same thing that people are saying our marriage is Absolutely. suffering, our relationships yeah. are suffering. And, and relationships, when they're suffering, we're suffering to the max. That's right. You know, it's, it's the greatest pain, greatest joy we could ever have is really healthy relationships. And the greatest hurt and pain we could ever experience is relationships that are suffering. And if we don't get better at relationships, this next year, even though it's going to have opportunities in it, we won't enjoy it. Right. Because the foundation of everything that we have is to enjoy relationships. Absolutely. It doesn't matter how much money you have. If you have no relationships or you have a beautiful house, you have no one to share it with, uh, it, it really makes everything meaningless. Right. Relationships are the key. Now, what I've learned is that most people don't know how to do relationships. Uh, we Because it has to be taught or I would even say it's a skill and it's something we have to work at to get good at. We're really good at giving up on people. We're really good at walking out on them. Mm. But we're not really good on developing our character and developing the skills to have healthy relationships. And this is something every single one of us can get better at. You know, I, I, I see um, singles and, and, and sometimes singles are really desperate to get married. And, and, and when, I, when I talk to them, sometimes I go, you know what, you're not ready. Right. Because there's some really relationship things you need to work through first so you're ready to be a husband. I'm not saying you have to be perfect, but, but there's some things that will stop us from going to the next level when it comes to dealing with each other. And, and we're quick to do also this, justify that's just the way I am. Jesus did not die to leave us the way and resurrect right. and come into our Thanks lives and fill yeah. us with his spirit to leave us the way we are. Every single one of us have edges or rough edges that need to be smoothed out. Yep. But, the, but before we could smooth those rough edges out, we have to admit, I need to get better at relationships. So we're going to dive into to this because we want to set up 2021 mm -hmm. to be a great year. And it doesn't matter what happens in 2021, we can still have a great year. And a foundation of having a great year, we've been talking on Sundays, is our relationship with God. Right. And then after that is our relationship with each other. How does your future look like? Does it look like, can you see healthy, fun, exciting, profitable, effective um, relationships in your future? Or are you wondering, oh, I don't know, I see myself hurting. I see myself lonely. It's just my relationships. That's an area I've not seen a lot of success in. Just because you haven't seen success in relationships, maybe this year or the years that, that came before this, doesn't mean that this year can't be a great year with a foundation of great relationships. Because I really believe God is talking to us. Get ready Absolutely. for 2021 because everything that we do is a found, everything we do, relationships are the foundation of it. Right. Whether it's ministry or business or, or anything you want to accomplish in life relationships are the reason. Yeah, and I love, even last week, Pastor, we talked about coronavirus and how it affected our relationships. The last eight or nine months have been difficult for a lot of us for a lot of reasons, but one of the major reasons, probably the major reason, is the division that it created. You know, don't come too close, stay away from me. Even when someone gets sick, you don't know if you can visit them or care for them because there's this uh, kind of stigma attached to it. So it really did a lot of damage to our relationships. So what a timely word you know, that we're diving into. You know, into. funny, I seen, I seen a, a video the other day, it was on the news, and these two guys are at a, at a I would say like a 7-Eleven, and they're fighting. 
and this other guy's filming it. And these guys aren't really good fighters. It was, it was just really embarrassing. It was kind of funny the way they were fighting. But by the time they were fighting, one person, their pants fell down. Oh, it was no. just a mess. It, <laughs> so, but what happened, they were saying, well, what, how'd they start the fight? Well, this is how the fight started. One guy opened the door for another. And the guy that, that the guy that, he, the, the one that we, the door was open for him got mad because he was too close to him. And he told him, don't you open the door, stay away. I'm practicing social distancing. Oh, and man. then they got so, they were practicing really well. By the time they were done, they were wrestling on the floor <laughs> of 7-Eleven. We need some work on yeah, relationships. relationships. For sure. <laughs> that COVID thing didn't matter after that. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Wow. But this is the title of tonight's message, Pastor, is getting ready for the new year. Let's get our relationships ready. Yeah. This is a super important topic, and you want to, st let's start off with the three biblical insights. Yeah, let's lay a foundation for this teaching, and let's, let's see what the Bible says about relationships. And I'm just going to, it says a lot about relationships, because God is a relationship God. One of the definitions of God is love. But what's the purpose of love? For relationships. Right. It's, it's not to love things, it's to love people. God is love and he loves you. And there's a lot of insight because God is a relationship God and he's the master at relationships. Absolutely. And insight number one, we're going to have three insights and then I want to give you some keys on how to develop successful or healthy relationships. Uh, insight number one, healthy and united relationships are a result of effort. I would just say this. Healthy relationships are a result of effort. What that means, if you're going to have a great relationships with anyone in your living room or, or people at church or your people at your work, it's going to take effort or it's going to take work. They just don't happen. So you know, true. we don't need to put effort in to, to be angry and upset and, and have destructive relationships or div divided relationships, that's natural. That happens easy. But to have a healthy relationship, and this is why when someone says, I've been married for whatever, 20 years, 10 years, 30 years, everybody like claps like, wow, that's a miracle. And because with, what they're looking at, I say, wow, it, I couldn't understand how difficult that is because I struggle with that. And it so required let's, a lot of work to get there, a right. lot of work. So we have to be, in, all it means is let's be intentional and let's put in some massive effort. Right. And Ephesians 4, 3, it says this, make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. Mm. Now, the scripture is saying here that we need to make not some effort. It says we need to make every, every effort. effort. So we're not to make effort to stay united and not be divided. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to make effort to stay in a marriage and not get a divorce. We're going to have to make effort to stay, I would even say this, stay in the church and not leave the church. Right. The, the majority of people that ever leave the church or leave a family, this is the reason. It's not that someone doesn't leave a family because they didn't like the kitchen counters. Right. They didn't leave the family because they didn't like the backyard. Nope. They didn't leave the family because there was a leaky faucet they couldn't fix. Right. They left the family or the marriage broke apart because they couldn't get along with someone. Right, a relationship. And it's a, it's a relationship that went mm -hmm. bad. And it's the same thing with a church. People don't leave a church building. They leave relationships. Exactly. And when you leave a relationship, this is what happens. You leave your process. Because anybody that's giving you a difficult time this is what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to grow through it, not run from it. Wow. When the Bible says make every effort, why does it say make every effort to stay united, make every effort to live in peace? This is, this is why he says it in the scripture. It's going to take everything. Mm -hmm. It's going to take massive effort because we all of us have our shortcomings. Right. All, of, all of us have our, our, the Bible says make faults. The Bible says make an allowance for each other's faults. And that means when you're, when you're entering into relationships, this is why a lot of us are scared to get into relationships because you start realizing, man, it takes a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And also they might see my faults and judge me. Right. But, but the scripture is saying we have to work through those faults because everybody has some good attributes and everyone has, every person has some attributes that need to be worked 
on. Right. So if we run away from every single person that needs work, you know where you're going to find yourself in Oregon or Montana living in a little in, in a little shack all, all by, by yourself, yourself with no electricity. That's what's going to happen to you. Right. But otherwise, we're going to have to learn how to get along. But the Bible says make every effort to keep yourselves united in one mind. That means in feeling, in undivided in opinion, thought, and purpose. So he's saying, really, we have to work on talking things through. You know, I talked to someone the other day, and, and he said to me, can we just agree to disagree? I go, no, that's not scripture. We don't agree to disagree. We agree to agree. Now, to agree means that we're going to have to hash some things out. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to talk. That means I'm going to have to see your side. You're going to have to see my side. And then we communicate and we just agree. But I know, I've noticed this. It's way easier to just walk away. Oh, yeah. It's way easier to ignore the relationship problem. It's way easier to put it underneath the rug. But none of that is effort. Right. It's way easier not to do counseling. I talk to people ready to give up on the marriage. I go, have you gone? Have you done everything you can? And they said, well, I think so. Have you gone to counseling? No. <laughs> right. Well, really, you haven't done anything then. <laughs> all you've done is argue and fight and try to figure out yourself. And not always do we need to figure everything out ourselves because God puts people in our lives that can help us figure it out. Right. We can learn. Even today, we can learn. So make it. every effort. You know what this is saying to somebody right now? We got to put in more effort. And as we put in more effort, it will lead to unity. Right. I also believe this, that two believers, it doesn't matter where they're from, they could have two believers, a man and a woman get together. They can have a great relationship. Even if they don't have the same language. Even if they never met each other, if they're two believers and they come together and they practice the principles of God, they can have a healthy relationship. Because healthy relationships are not based on personalities, they're based on principles. Wow, that's good. They're not based on personalities, they're based on principles. principles. So let's make every effort, every yeah. effort stay in the church, Love every that. effort to stay married. Every effort not to quit and leave somebody. Make some effort. Let's, let's not make our relationships disposable. Right. You know, it's, we're, just, uh, we're living right now in a disposable world. Like in our home, we mostly use disposable, disposable plates because we don't want to wash dishes. Nobody wants to wash those dishes. <laughs> so, <dispo> <laughs> but I think we, we treat people that way as well. Wow. So that's insight number one. Right. Healthy and united relationships are a result of effort. That's insight number one. I love the second part of that, which is healthy relationships are cultivated. Right. Cultivated. That's a, that's a word that has a lot of meaning to it, Pastor. What does that tell well, us? Well, let, let's look at 1 Corinthians 1.10. It says this. I have, I have a serious concern to bring up with you. This is Paul saying this. My friends, using the authority of Jesus, our master. So he's introducing. Because I got, there's a serious problem that I want to address today. Mm. I'll, put, I'll put it as urgently as I can. And what he's saying is, this is a really big deal. And he says, you must get along with each other. You must learn to be considerate of one another, cultivating a life in common. And he's, uh, he goes, he's, he says this, I, I have a real urgent, urgent issue I want to address. There's some division in the church, and I'm hearing it. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not hearing that, I'm not hearing testimonies of what God is doing I'm not hearing that people are getting saved. I'm not hearing that the church is growing. I'm not hearing that there's more Power 12 care groups. I'm not hearing that the glory of God is showing up in the church. This is what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that there's a lot of drama. Uh -oh. And this is what he was saying. He goes, someone began to tell me that there's division. Right. And, and this is what I've learned is that when, we're, when our relationships aren't healthy in the church, and, with, and when I say, well, church, what are you talking about? Well, the, it's as simple as this, me and you getting along. Mm -hmm. That's the church. You know, uh, my wife and, uh, and me getting along. That's the church. So, when, so when, when we're not getting along, instead of the good news getting out to the world, you know what happens? They, they, they start, what gets out there is bad press. And the worst press that we could have as believers is failing, failing relationships. 
divided relationships. Relationships are full of anger and bitterness. This does not glorify God because Jesus came to reestablish relationship, our relationship with him and our relationship with each other. It's all about relationships. I love it. I love so it. So the word, so the word cultivate. Yeah, the cultivate. So you have a definition here in the notes, Pastor, which is amazing. It says to seek the acquaintance or friendship of. So all it's saying is I'm making it a goal to be friendly. I'm making, I'm going out of my way. I'm not seeking drama. I'm not seeking to fight. I'm not, I'm not seeking to correct you. This is my goal. I just want to be friends. That's my goal. But that's the goal. Let's keep on reading. Right. And the definition continues to promote or improve the growth of a plant or crop, et cetera, or in this case, relationship, by labor and attention. Right. To I love this. So, so the, this definition is saying that if we're going to have healthy relationships, um, the goal is to, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to do my part to promote or improve the growth of the relationship. Right. I'm going to do my part. Cultivating, it, it takes labor and it takes um, attention. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, you might re be reading a book. It might be staying up late at night and hashing something out. It might be saying, I forgive you. Mm -hmm. I, you forgive me. Right. All these things are work. Talking about things. You, uh, it takes work to communicate, like open your mouth and say, um, I'm struggling with this. Now, I, I know this, that I, I don't like confrontation, but I can't have healthy relationships if there is no confrontation. That means right. if we're not addressing the issues and talking about them, we cannot have healthy relationships. Absolutely. So it takes work to do that. And, and usually, if you're addressing an issue, this is the first thing that happens with the person you're addressing. They put up their wall. Mm -hmm. And now they start, they start justifying their position. And they may, might start pointing fingers back your way. And that's the beginning of, <laughs> of cultivating a relationship. Right. Hey, so you work through all that. Now, if you get past that stage, you could finally get, not get offended yourself. If you, I totally understand. I didn't bring this up to offend you. I just brought this up because I want to have a relationship with you. And I, and I love you. And I care about you. And I, and I know I'm part of it too. It takes two to have a, a good relationship and a difficult one. And I realize my part there. And, but right now, I just, the, reason, the reason I'm willing to do this is because you matter to me. So I'm willing to work on it. And cultivating also might, might have to do with the words that you're saying. Right. Like cultivating. It's what you're putting in and what's going to come out. Right. You know, when, 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 um, when couples, before they get married, they're really, they're a lot better at cultivating their relationships than before they get married. Hmm. You know, um, before we got married, and I'm, I'm not saying I'm not, well, I'll say this. Before I got married, I go to 7-Eleven and I see one of those little, little fake flowers mm -hmm. and I would buy it. And I would say, Lisa, I just want to let you know, I love you and I was thinking about you. Right. You know, now, now I, I, could, I do that stuff, but not as often. Before it was just like boom, boom. It's, right. Now I need to like think about it. I, I need to cultivate that. I need to say things intentionally that are encouraging and building my wife. That takes a little more work. So cultivating a relationship is the effort that we need. Right. And, and you know, we were talking about this beforehand, Pastor. Even this week, I've had a couple of those confrontations. And they, they require a lot of work. It's right. a long conversation. It's not going to be a short, quick right. You know, hey, you offended me. If there's an offense there, it's going to take some time to really fix Hash that and talk it through. And it takes effort. It takes cultivation. It takes the labor that you're talking about. So I want, to, I want to say something here. It says you must learn to be considerate of one another, cultivate in life. Learn, mm -hmm. learn. Uh, so learning means, oh, no, but learning means no one, a, no one needs to teach us how to be selfish, right. angry, unforgiven, hmm. inconsiderate. Hold on to a grudge, grudge, be sarcastic or controlling. But we do need to learn how to communicate, forgive, treat others how we'd like to be treated, share, turn their other cheek, 
Right. Bless those that curse us, love our enemies, reconcile broken relationships. Mm. So we don't need to learn how to do it the wrong way. Right. We need to learn how to do it the right, right way. And then right. cultivating has to, to develop or improve by education or training. Love it. And this is what we're doing today. Learning. And it doesn't matter how difficult the relationship is. We can learn yeah. how to do it better. That's right. And a difficult relationship, all it is, is school for your spiritual maturity. I love that. That's awesome. Difficult relationships are school for your spiritual maturity. So insight number one was it's going to require effort to have healthy and united relationships. Insight number two, pastor, is God's standard for our relationships is unity. This goes back to that point you're making about we agree to agree. Right. Relation, God's standard for relationship is unity. Yeah. So being divided is not an option for believers, for mm -hmm. believers. In 1 Corinthians 1.10, it says, I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church. It is said, let there, try not to have, not many of them. Right. But the standard is like really high. He's None. saying no division. Right. And he said, well, is that possible? Well, of course it's possible. Because the scripture says it's possible. Exactly. For believers, it is possible to be united. For believers, it is possible for, have, for us to be in harmony and have peaceful relationships if we're led by the Spirit. Yep. Of course, it's possible. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and the scripture goes on, rather be of one mind united in thought and purpose. So division is just separation by difference of opinion or feeling or disagreement or dissension. And God says, let there be none of it. So if God's saying, let there be none of it, that means we're going to make every effort to make sure there is none of it. Right. You know, me and my wife have been married for 31 years. And I could say this, that there is no division. Hmm. There's zero division in our relationship. The fact that me and Lisa have a united relationship and there's harmony is proof that all of us us believers can have harmony. And the reason being, we all have the same Holy Spirit. Right. Now, if, if we're not led by the Spirit, that's where all the division comes. If you find yourself separating from your brothers and sisters in the Lord, understand what's separating you is not the Spirit of God. What's separating you is the devil, and what's separating you is your own sinful nature. Right, and I can bear out your unity with Lisa. Before the service tonight, you did a Facebook Live just to talk about this message. Yeah. And she literally read a point right off of his message without ever having read his message. Right. So she knew what you were going to say. She had the same spirit that unity was there even right. before you preached this message about right. relationships. That's pretty amazing. Right, right. So what we're going to do, what we're going to do with this statement here is th that God standard for relationships is unity. We need to renounce all disunity mm -hmm. that we've accepted. Right. Like, it's just the way it is. We just can't get along. No, nope, not for believers. Non-believers, of course. Of course, that's part of, the, that's part of the nature of a relationship without God. Right. But we as believers, there's no such thing as allowing division. It mu division needs to be addressed. Now, it takes work. Right. You know what takes work? Personal work with, within us. And you know what it also takes? Humility. Mm -hmm. It also takes value in other people. Right. Because if I'm going to work it out with you, I got to value you. Right. Um, if I'm going to work it out with you, I have to make myself vulnerable. Like nobody wants to do this stuff. Right. But through the spirit, Jesus made himself totally vulnerable. Left heaven, came to earth, made himself totally vulnerable. What was the purpose? To reconcile a relationship with us at whatever cost, even death. Wow. wow. That's amazing. We can do this. Absolutely. I love what you said, that God's not going to call us to do something that is impossible. He's right. going to enable us to do it. Right. And so we've got two, two powerful insights already. First, healthy and united relationships were a result of effort. Two, God's standard for relationships is unity. And then number three, our relationships build people's faith in Jesus or cause them to doubt. Right. Now, this is, this is huge because God uses relationships to build faith in others. The, you know, the reason right now we have so many atheists and agnostics, and I would even say this, that are actually coming out of children that grew up in the church, hmm. and then they're becoming atheist agnostics. A lot of that's happening. Right. 
a big part of it, it's not the only reason, but a big part of it is this, is that children have been brought up in a family where no one gets along with each other. Wow. And, and there's no proof that God's love is even real. Hmm. So we're preaching a message that God is love, God lives in me, it's a message of forgiveness, it's a message of reconciliation, it's a message of unity, but yet we can't get along. Right. So what ends up happening, if, this, if that's all the world sees and that's all our family sees, this is the conclusion. There must be no God. Right. Because what you're saying and what you're living are two different things. Wow. You're still angry. You're still upset. You're holding on to grudges, just like I do what they're saying. Right. I do the same exact thing, but you're saying you're, that God is love and God is in you. And what I've noticed is that God's written his laws in our hearts, on every single heart. Like we know right from wrong. Everybody right. knows right from wrong. That's why even you have a little boy or a little girl and they're stealing something, they're they hiding. hide. Hiding you exactly. don't have to tell a kid, hey, stealing is wrong. You know, th what they do is they'll, they'll steal it and hide. Right. And they know how to lie too. Mm-hmm. They know how to lie. I remember there was a day where um, my dad, you know, he had a business and he had, he'd take the money home and he would count it. So he knew exactly how much money he had at home. Mm -hmm. Well, one day, I mean, Robert, Robert, Pastor Robert brought a little friend home. They were like nine years old, eight years old, seven years old. He brought a friend over and they were playing. And my dad at, at, the, at nighttime counted his money and he saw $100 was missing. Uh-oh. $100 was missing. So the, the next day, the little boy comes over, real cute kid. And he comes over, and the first thing he says, he said, uh, I just want to let you guys know that if there's $100 missing, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> he, he told he on himself. himself. Yeah, but the idea, he knew right from wrong. He said, Pastor, what's the point? This is the point. The world knows how relationships are supposed to be. The world knows how Christians are supposed to act. The world knows that if you're saying God is in you, you should be kind, you should be forgiven, and you should be wise when it comes to relationships. If you're angry and you're upset and you're cussing and you're taking revenge and you say yourself, you're, you call yourself a believer, this is what the world will tell you. You call yourself a believer? Is this what Jesus would do? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. You have non-believers saying, is that what Jesus would do? I don't think so. Because they understand the standards of God right. are higher than the standards of this world. Absolutely. And what they're saying is, don't call yourself a Christian if you're not going to act like Jesus. Right. Crazy that the world knows. So now I want you to get this. Our relationships are the foundation of our preaching, our teaching, our testimony. Before they hear what we say, they look at our relationships. Yeah. This is what everybody wants. They want healthy, united relationships. Not perfect ones, but they want healthy, united relationships. That means we're, we're, we got issues, but we work through it. Right. We work through it somehow. But Jesus said a prayer before he left. Now, exactly, yeah. let's look at that. This prayer talks exactly what you're talking about, about how our relationships can either attract to people to Jesus or detract them. Right. John 17, 9, verse, uh, verse 9 through 11, is going to say, My prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. Okay, so let's stop there. Jesus is making a prayer before he goes to the cross. Mm -hmm. And this is like one of his final prayers. Right. He has the final prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. But this was right, right before that. He's praying, he's praying, he's not praying for the world. What he's praying is for present believers and future believers. Right. Now, every single person I think as a believer would like to know what Jesus was praying in his private time. He often... He often separated himself and he prayed. Right. Well, now we get a little glimpse of a prayer mm -hmm. and what's important to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And in this prayer, he is praying his heart. He's saying, this is what I want. A matter, a matter of fact, this is going to be our last point today because okay. I want to cover part two next week. Okay. Next week, we're going to cover three keys to having healthy relationships. So today, 
we're covering some really important insight about relationships. Right. But a big reason that we need to have healthy relationships because it's our witness. See, our relationships, how we're getting along, is going to be attractive to non, a non-believer or it's going to dis- detract them right. from God. Attract them or detract them. Attract them or repulse them. Right. Our relationships. Yeah. So they're looking at our relationships. They're looking at Lisa and I's relationship before they hear anything. Like, tell, don't tell me what about Christ and you guys are beating each other up on the weekends. Wow. It, you're, it's, I'm not saying you're not saved, but you can't be an effective witness. Mm-hmm. So let's see what Jesus prays in verse 10 now. Verse 10. John 17, 10. All who are mine belong to you, and you have given them to me. So they bring me glory. Okay, so the purpose of a believer is to give God glory. The purpose of a believer is to what? Give, give God, God glory. glory. Now, I looked up the word glory today, and I finally found a definition that really clarifies it for me really simple. And this is what it means. To cause the value of a person or thing to be manifested or acknowledge. I love that definition. So yeah. our, 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 our part on this earth is to cause people to see the value of having Jesus in their life. Right. To cause people to see, see God, for, who he for really them is. to see who he really is. Right. And we show him who he really is through the way we love each other. Yeah. Bible says, by their fruits you shall Know them. Right. Not by what they say. It's the fruit of the Spirit is love. So the, fr- the, the love that we walk in for each other, that's why we can't afford to have division in our relationships. Like, no division because it affects our witness. And this is what happens. When we're not getting along, we cannot give glory to God. Right. God is not glorified. People can't kind of see the value of having Jesus in their lives. So our relationships can actually cause people to see God for who he really is. Right. Or to see him for who he's not. Right. And either way, it's, this, the consequences are so high. This is their eternal souls that are at stake on the way that we love each other and deal with relationships. And that's why the Bible says, Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God or something. That's it. Yeah. I, I used to sing it. I used to sing it. <laughs> Beloved, let, let us, us love, love one, one another. another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. What is the next part? I don't know. That's all I know. <laughs> First John 4, 7, and 8. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> First John 4, 7, and 8. But the idea is that, beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Yeah. And I, this is the proof that we have God in us is our love. Right. But let's keep on reading his prayer. So verse 11. Now, this is... John 17, now verse 11. Yes. Now I am departing from the world. They are staying in this world, but I am coming to you. Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. So he prays, out of all the things he could pray for, he prays, may your spirit be with them and protect them so that they will be united. United. So that means that there would be something that would do everything it could to cause them to be divided. And he's saying protect them from that spirit of division that would try to attack them and attack the relationship. Right. And he says, so they will be united just as we are. So the standard of unity is, is the standard of Father, Son, Holy Spirit united. God saying, I want all of you in the church Brothers and sisters to be united like that. Wow. Different races, different ethnic groups, different ages, different backgrounds. And he says, still, this is a prayer. I want all of you to be united the same way me and the Father united. In thought, in purpose, in opinion. That takes some work. Yep. And you know what that means? We have to be led by the Spirit to be united. But let's look at, let's look at um, John 17, 20, and 21. The prayer continues. This is the second part or the back half of Jesus' prayer. So he prays that they'll be united just as we are. And verse 7, I mean, um, John 17, 20. Verse 20. <clears throat> verse 20 says, I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. Wow, so he's saying, 
I'm praying not only for the 12 I got and the ones that are around me. Right. I'm praying also for every single disciple that's coming. Right. Who, anybody who will ever believe through their message. Now, that's all of us here. Right. This prayer, just think about this. Imagine Jesus laying hands on you and saying, this is my prayer. Wow. This happened over 2,000 years ago. Exactly. I pray for the church. Look what he prays for. Verse 21 says, I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. And there's the key. After he's praying for unity, so that. Right. So that. I'm praying that they'll be united. That they'll stay, stay in me and me in you. And, and when I think about that, I, I need to love you through God's eyes. Wow. What, what I mean by that is, is that we're so quick to say, man, I don't like that brother. I don't like that sister. And why don't you ask God what he thinks about that brother and sister you're dogging? Hmm. Because God's saying, I love them and I sent my son to die for them. That's how valuable they are to me. Hmm. And when you're discounting them and you're tearing them down and you're like throwing them out of the picture, you're throwing, my, you're throwing me out of the picture. You're throwing what I value out of the picture. I love you, but I love them too. Right. With all their issues and all their shortcomings, I love them. Mm-hmm. So he's saying, I want them united so that. The reason I want unity is so that the world will believe. So that the world will believe. Maybe you've never heard this. But right now, I believe we're going to we're gonna, we're getting ready for 2021. 2021 and, yep. and right now, it's time to get our relationships ready for 2021. And you know what that means? If there's any division in our relationships with our brothers and sisters, this is what we need to do. Or maybe there's division with your mom, dad. It's time to work on those relationships. Yeah. This week might be some intentional effort that you put in, and you might have to have a meeting like you had this week right. trying to hash out some disagreements right. with a brother in the church. Right. We've got to work on it. Yeah. You know, it might be that. It might be a call that you've been avoiding. You guys fought and you guys argued, never call each other again, but your brother's in the Lord and God's saying, see, the problem is when that relationship fell apart and you refused to work it together, your life has been on pause from that point. It's not like God says, go ahead. God says, nope, wow. you can't go ahead. That's why the Bible says, if you have a, a, bro a problem with your brother and sister and, and you know that, he goes, leave your gift at the altar. Right. Don't even bother worshiping. And go, and go make peace with that person. Yeah. It's going to take some work. Right. It's going to take some humility. That means it's going to take us, yes, okay, I admit it. And it might even mean that we're going to be corrected. Oh, yeah. That's okay, too. Yeah. Because, because if we're going to fix anything, it's going to be, yes, there's going to be maybe correction on that side. But it's going to come back to us and say, well, I need to work on that as well. Thank you for letting me know that. And we have to work on receiving um, constructive correction. Right. Because it's hard because we'll put our walls up and that won't allow us to be unified. And that's the, that was one of the hardest things for me this week is, is hearing some truth about some things that I needed to correct. Mm. And when that comes, it's not, it's not the, the hard part is really embracing it and saying, okay, I see you're right, and let's have a right. conversation about it. The easy thing is what you said earlier. Never mind. Forget that person. I'm done with this relationship. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear those, those hard truths. And we have to confront that in the context of relationship. That's where that work really begins. And, and the, what, so that what? The world, the world will, will believe. believe. Yeah. Our unity is what attracts a person to Jesus. Right. To believe in Jesus. Yeah. So that's why we can't afford any disunity. So I really believe that we've, we've covered enough. Yeah. You know, next week we'll cover three major keys to having healthy relationships. This is going to be really, really good. Keys to having healthy relationships. But we came to some insights today. Insight number one is that healthy and united relationships are a result of effort. Mm -hmm. What that means without being intentional about it and put a massive effort, we'll never have healthy relationships. Be intentional and put in massive effort, everything you got. 
um, healthy relations are cultivated. But insight number two, God's standard for relationships is simple. It's unity, unity. and no division. The standard is no division. Wow, that takes some work. And insight number three, our relationships are um, build people's faith in Jesus or cause them to doubt. Right. Our relationships either attract people to Jesus or detract them from Jesus. And what I want to do is I want to attract people to Jesus. And that's why it's even more, I mean, it's way more, uh, me and Lisa have a great relationship and we enjoy it. But I'll, it's something even more powerful than that. It's actually a light that brings people and attracts people to Jesus. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Our relationship is, is great to be enjoyed, but what's even better, our unity. Right. If they see people see us talking and we're eating lunch at somewhere, we can't sit down and eat lunch anywhere now, but, <laughs> but if we're eating lunch somewhere and they saw yeah. us talking, right. and, and I've had people actually come to our table and say, I just love your conversation. Right. I just love your conversation. I didn't mean to butt in, but I just love what I've seen there. Mm -hmm. I love seeing you pray together. I love seeing you unified. Mm -hmm. they, they, it attracts them. I'm, as a matter of fact, it was just the other day, our family's around the table at the Mission Inn, and we're celebrating someone's birthday, and they saw us communicating. They saw us praying. And an uh, uh, elderly gentleman came to the table after he ate. He goes, I'm ready to leave. He goes, but I just want to say, I just love the way you and your family are communicating and praying. That is so beautiful. Wow. So it attracted him. Right. But it also attracts all the people. Now, let's say me and you are sitting at that same table and we're arguing. <laughs> and then we're saying that, and we're talking about church business and and they realize we're from the way and right. we're arguing. Right. Do you think those people are going to come to the way? They're going to say, oh, I don't know. I'll ever come to that church. Right. Because I seen, I seen two people, maybe probably leaders, that were talking and they were in disagreement arguing. So it attracts the people. And the last thing, our relationship, or, no, I already said that. Yeah. Build our people's faith in Jesus or cause them to doubt. Awesome. So we could do this. Let's end in prayer tonight. And, and I want to thank every one of you for tuning in and I am so grateful that even through the TV right now, through your monitor, through your phone, that we could interact and have a relationship. And it's kind of like I'm in your living room now. And you know what we're talking? This is like a big counseling session about relationships. And I really believe that someone's relationship or marriage and maybe even relationship with your kids is going to be restored at this time. But the first step to really having what it takes to have healthy relationships is number one, asking Jesus to come into your life. Because Jesus is the relationship builder. He brings his Holy Spirit, which his Holy Spirit gives us the ability to have healthy relationships. And if today you're saying, you know, I want to have healthy relationships, I would say this. Would you please just do this? This is the first step. Restore your relationship with God. Because when you have your relationship with God healthy, now you can be healthy enough to have a relationship with another person. Because without God in the center of your relationships, this is what's going to happen. Um, other things will be the center. Having your way, an issue, but not love and not unity. That, won't be the, that will not be the center of your relationship. God is the key to having healthy relationships. And what's even more important, when you leave this earth, you're going to leave with the relationship with God that you have or don't have. That means that no one's going to heaven that doesn't have a relationship with God. And every single, every single person that will be separated from God and in a real hell forever and ever and ever are those that chose not to have a relationship with God. It's simple as that. Jesus died for what? To forgive us of our sins, cleanse us of every wrong thing that we've ever done, so we could have, remove all the obstacles of relationship. That's all he did. That means, that means because we've sinned, there was judgment over our head. He goes, I can't have a relationship with them and all I see is judgment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my son to be judged on their behalf, to be punished on their behalf so they can be forgiven. So now when I see them, I see them forgiven. I see them righteous. I see them, I see them whole. And now we can have a relationship. That's what it's all about. God is not trying to punish you. 
he wants to forgive you. He wants to cleanse you. He wants to set you free. Say, Pastor, I've, I've really been bad at these relationships with God and everybody else. And I think I've burned my, I think I've burned my relationship with God. No, you haven't. God is so loving. And he's so kind. And, and he's, he doesn't forgive. I will say this. He is forgiveness. He is forgiveness. That's what he is. That means it doesn't matter what you've done. God is not looking to punish you. He's not looking to say, I told you don't do that. What he's trying to do is say, let's remove that. I paid the price to have a relationship with you. This is how valuable you are to God. So today, if you're saying, Pastor, that's me. I want to start a relationship with God. In that relationship is everything you've ever wanted and everything you need to have healthy relationships with other people. I right now, um, I don't have any personal enemies. Like, that's my enemy. I'm not saying that someone doesn't think of me as their enemy, but I'm not nobody's enemy. I've just, I just, I, there's nobody that's going to get me to the point where I'm going to forsake mm. love and my purpose and my peace. I'm not going to do it. Wow. It's not worth it. I, that's why the Bible says if anybody offends you or anything like that, or if you have an enemy, go pray for them. Right. What he's saying is don't let it settle in your spirit. Handle it through prayer. Bless them. So that way it doesn't settle in your spirit. So today, let's pray to receive Christ and enter the relationship. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. And number two, let's pray to, for our relationships. That God will reveal, like, these relationships to work. Let's work on them then, okay? And if there's anybody that you have a disagreement with, don't ignore them. Maybe this week it's time to set an appointment and just pray before you in that appointment and, and just walk in love in that appointment and do everything you can and make every effort to keep yourselves united and bring the relationship back together and have some peace. Let's pray. Bow your heads and close your eyes. And if you're saying, Pastor, I want to receive Christ as my Savior and I want to have Jesus in me and His Spirit and His love so that I can have healthy relationships. Or maybe today you're saying, man, I need forgiveness for not having unforgiveness. I'm ready to get rid of Right now it's time to forgive. I'm ready to forgive them. You don't need to see them right now to forgive them. You can forgive the, the person that hurts you right now and begin that process of restoring your relationship with your mother, your father, your brother, your husband, your wife, your friend. And the reason I just mentioned those people, because those are the people that usually, if we're going to have any major beefs, are the people who are closest to us. Right. The people we should love are the people that hurt us the most. So God's saying, come on, let's reconcile that stuff. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I ask you now. I ask you now. To forgive me. To forgive me. For all my sins. For all my sins. And any unforgiveness. And any unforgiveness. I've had. I've had. Against anyone. Against anyone. From this day forward. From this day forward. I will do my best. I will do my best. To work on my relationships. To work on my relationships. I'm ready. I'm ready. To be a witness. To be a witness. To be a light. To be a light. To this world. To this world. Save me now. Save me now. Make me whole. Make me whole. And fill my heart. And fill my heart. With your Holy Spirit. With your Holy Spirit. With your love. With your love. So that I can love others. So that I can love others. And love you. And love you. I receive you, Jesus. I receive you, Jesus. And the eternal life. And your eternal life. That you give. That you give. I have a relationship with you now. I have a relationship with you now. And it's equipping me. And it's equipping me. To have a relationship with others. To have a relationship with others. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For being patient with me. For being patient with me. Never giving up on me. Or never giving up on me and dying for me and dying for me before before i ever knew you i ever knew you thank you lord thank you lord in jesus name in jesus name, i pray i pray amen amen god is so good and and you know i want to let you know if you said that prayer i want to say congratulations heaven they have a, par a party right now right the angels are blowing trumpets and they're dancing because one soul came gave their lives to the lord so if you just said that prayer and you meant it if you meant it, raise your hand in, in that living room. Say, I meant that prayer. And, and if you're in that living room with other people and you, there's a leader there, make sure that you uh, just make sure they help them get to their next step. Their next step is to go online, igotsaved.com. igotsaved.com. So God bless you. Just go on igotsaved.com. We'll help you with your next step. We love you on Sunday morning, 9 and 11 o'clock. Love to see you there. We are having a great series, What's Missing? It's been really, really good. And last week we covered what's missing is faith. And it was really great, great message. And we're talking about our relationship with God. So we love you. God bless you. Need prayer. Please just go ahead and just write down your prayers on YouTube or Facebook. And we'll have a team that will pray with you for sure. We love you. God bless you. Remember this, if God's for you, 
There's no one that can come against you. Enjoy life. Enjoy the abundant life. And enjoy your relationships. God bless you.